What is up my fellow net dwellers, Couch Command here, and today I am teaching you how to make a 7 days to die dedicated server on G-Portal. Also how to mod the dang thing. Anyways, hit that like button if this video helps you out, comment down below on some other dedicated servers you'd like me to teach you how to make, and subscribe to the channel for more weekly gaming content. Now let's jump into it. So, I'm being lazy, I want to do a fast video today, so I'm actually going to walk you through how to set up the 7 days to die server on G-Portal, as well as how to mod it. Specifically, how to mod it using the FTP connection. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So to spin up a new server, simply you just click on your add server off your homepage. We're going to go ahead and pick seven days. We're going to choose the amount of slots here. You can choose up to your total amount of slots, or you can go as low as 10. We're just going to go ahead and do this as a 10 slaughter. Uh, let's go 15. Go ahead and add it. All right. Now that that part's done, two things to note are gonna be your username here and your password here. These are gonna be used for actually being able to FTP in your server. And I can actually show you how to do that real quick. So let's go ahead and open up FileZilla. You can find FileZilla, the link to FileZilla in the description down below. But you'll notice we've got a host here of, uh, we'll close out of that, not really in the mood to update. We've got the host of this IP address. We've got this user. This password. And this port. Go ahead and quick connect. Okay, so once you've actually got your FTP connection up, you're gonna go ahead and just right click anywhere in here. We're gonna go ahead and create a directory. We're gonna name it mods. Once you have the mods folder created, go ahead and enter it, and you're gonna just move any mods you want to take place on your server into that. I'm gonna actually go ahead and just use my gaming backup drive here. I've got some of my seven days game mods stored. Uh, do, do mods. Let's go ahead and just move over the wasteland pack. And then this is just gonna do its thing, transfer all the files over. And while it's doing its thing there, let's go ahead and go into our basic settings and let's go ahead and start setting stuff up. This lets you do latest stable or the experimental. You can pick the server name. This is going to be man serve. The max player count, you can lower this down to actually provides more resources for actually playing. I generally just leave it at the default, which is 15. Make sure you change your admin password. Just, it says change me, listen to it. Uh, game name. Server visibility is public. You can go ahead and type in whatever password you want here. If you want to actually link your server to a website, you can do that here. This is your server's world size. Go ahead and up that one up quite a bit. Uh, your world gen seed can be whatever. Here you can select your predefined maps. So you have the defaults here. Game difficulty, similar to all of these I covered in the original one. So I'll probably link that. Zombies day move, let's go ahead and have them jog. Sprint, sprint, yes. Creative mode, no. 20, 120. Telnet, no. Make sure, as always, you turn EAC off. Nothing, persist player profiles. Uh, make sure you persist the player profiles if you want to actually be able to block players. So basically what will happen is somebody will join with a profile and they'll have to always use that character to join the server. Safe zone level is basically zombies can't spawn onto you until you're a certain level or a certain amount of time goes by. So I just normally leave those as default. Go ahead and jump that up to 1020. 1028. Right here, you can do your loot abundance, which I normally like double loot. 
Boot respawn every seven days. This is how many land claims people can have. You generally just do one. I generally up the land claim size though to 62. The dead zone is how close you can have it. Most of these are fairly simple as far as how they walk through you. Go ahead and turn on the airdrop marker. Go ahead and set it to every 24 hours. This is how many on animals can spawn in the game. This is the Blood Moon base count, so you can go ahead and knock that up to 64 if you want, 24, whatever. Remember, it's a multiplier. Blood Moon warning is what time of day it'll warn. I generally like to do it a little earlier, so four. Range is the variance in between, so a 3D variance, and then I generally like to do three days in between my Blood Moon. Reserve slots, basically you can reserve slots in there for permission. So I can say, hey, of these 15 slots I've got available, four are gonna be reserved. And I want players to have a permission level of 50 to be able to reserve it. I also like to do an increase on that. And I like to increase the kill range to generally like 250 meters is pretty good. Most of the rest of this, you can leave the same. Twitch server permissions is for Twitch integration, and this is whether or not they can use the Twitch Blood Moon. Next thing to make sure you go ahead and set up after you've got your basic settings how you want. Let's go ahead and save that. Go into your configuration files, and you're gonna wanna select your server config here. That is just the server config. I want the admin config. Uh, we might need to turn it on and turn it off again. All right, now that the mod's done transferring, let's go ahead and close out of our FileZilla here. By the way, you'll notice down here, you'll have your queued files as files waiting to pend. Failed files are anything that failed to send. Successful files is everything that you successfully sent. So with nothing queued, nothing failed, and everything success, we have successfully transferred the Wasteland mod. I'm gonna turn this on, and I'm going to turn it off again here in a second. I'm just turning it on so I can see if it'll generate the admin config because I do want to modify that. We'll just go ahead and just turn it right back off. And configuration files, there it is. So you do have to turn on the server once to get the admin config, but once you've got the admin config, you can come in here. What you're going to want to do is right here, we have your example of group Steam ID or user Steam ID. You're going to want to go ahead and add yourself and all of your reserved users. Go ahead and set yourself as permission level of zero, which is admin. And go ahead and set everybody else to permission level 50, which is what you set your uh, reserve slots to, so they can join in on the reserve slots. Once you're done setting those permissions, go ahead and save it. Go ahead and turn the server back on. I'm gonna go back to basic settings because I don't remember what on earth password I did for this. I think I did password. I did not do password. I did pat bard. That's all right. All right, let's go ahead and launch seven days and try to connect to the server. Make sure whenever you're launching seven days, you have the anti-cheat turned off. And I always turn off game sparks. So I don't even know what it's for. And we're going to be using this piece right here to connect. So go ahead and go to join a game. Connect an IP. Our IP is 172.107.35.103. And 2610. I really think it's 2690. Oh, no, nope, that went in. This is P A S W W O R D. Pause work. And voila! So that is how you host a seven day server through G portal. It's really quick and easy to set up. It is a little expensive where it's basically about a dollar per slot, give or take. If you're just doing 10 slots, it's like 15 bucks. If you're going to bounce it to 30, it's only like an extra $15 to go to 30. So basically you double your storage for another 15 bucks. So it's not too terrible. And these work off of Basically, it's considered uh, server slots is what you're purchasing. And so you can do multiple servers. I still have 20 slots left, so I can go start up other servers if I wanted to.
It's just in total, you only can have 30 slots worth of servers up and running. That is how you make a G portal server. Access it via file FTP and set up your mods folder as well as move a mod and go ahead and configure your admin config. There's our welcome home and we are good to go. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys have any suggestions for other games or mods you'd like to see on the channel, make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Couch Command, that's Couch CMD, or feel free to hit me up in my Discord. Links at the top of my channel page or over on my description. Anyways, hit that like button if this video helped you out. Comment down below on some other dedicated servers you guys would like me to teach you how to make, and subscribe to the channel for more weekly gaming content. This was Couch Band. Y'all have a good night, a great tomorrow, and amazing rest of the week. I'll see you next time.